Hi everyone, Erin here in the forest at Minglewood Farm and Nature Preserve. Thank you so much for joining us on our virtual field trip all about the parts of a plant. When a seed enters the soil, it sprouts the necessary plant parts that it needs in order to grow and reproduce. Reproduce means making more of yourself. The different parts of a plant are roots, stem, leaves, flowers, and sometimes fruit. Let's learn more and get started with our field trip. Roots. Roots grow underground and help plants get food and water from the soil. They help anchor the plant, especially when it's windy out. Roots come in all different shapes and sizes. They can be small and delicate like the lettuce plant. The roots of lettuce and other leafy greens stay close to the surface and need extra moisture. Some roots can become very large. Acorns, the seed of an oak tree, grow roots first. When an acorn seed germinates or begins to grow, a single root splits the tip of the acorn and grows into the ground in search of water. When it eventually grows into a giant oak tree, its roots can spread up to 90 feet wide. We even eat roots, like beets, carrots, radishes, onions, and potatoes. To learn more, let's check in with Farmer Ben. Here's a good example of some of the root crops we grow here at Minglewood. This is garlic. I planted this garlic back in the fall. It grew throughout the winter time. And now in spring, let's take a look and see how it's doing. Pulling up. And, well, it's not quite finished growing its bulbs, so it's got probably another couple more weeks. We're gonna stick this back in. Stems. As the plant grows, its stem bursts through the soil. Stems provide support for the plant and a place for leaves, flowers, and fruit to grow. Stems transport water and nutrients up from the roots to the rest of the plant. Stems can be delicate like this trout lily, or strong and sturdy like a hardwood tree. In the spring, you may notice little stems popping up out of the soil. Let's take a look around. What do you notice? Do you see any plant stems emerging from the soil? A fiddlehead is the young, coiled leaves of a fern. It gets its name because, well, it looks like the head of a fiddle. The fern leaves are wrapped up tightly, and the young stem is smooth and delicate. The fern eventually unfurls its leaves from the stem and lays flat. We even eat stems, like asparagus and rhubarb. Let's check in with Farmer Bill to learn about a stem vegetable that we grow right here in the garden. Now here is a fine example of an edible stem that we grow here in the farm. This is called kohlrabi. This is white kohlrabi and purple. And you can actually see that the stem is starting to enlarge. And it will probably become about the baseball size. And of course kohlrabi can be used in salad, they can be roasted, they can be eaten raw. It's a very versatile vegetable and very easy to grow. Leaves and buds. Leaves start to sprout from the stem of the plant. Most plants' food is made in their leaves. Leaves are designed to capture sunlight. Sunlight is used by the plant to make food through a process called photosynthesis. Leaves come in all different shapes and sizes, and lots are tasty to eat. To learn more, let's check in with Farmer Bill in the garden. Here I am standing amongst some of the greens that I grow. As a farmer, I grow lots of different leafy greens. I grow lettuces, I grow bok choy, spinach, all kinds of things. Let me show you a few of them. Now these are some fine examples of some of the different kinds of leaves that I grow. This right here is a gojo. It's a type of uh, cross between spinach and bok choy. As you can see, it's got the deep dark greens, which are very healthy for you, as we all know. This is cat soy right here. Down here, this is a, another shaped leaf that's quite different. This is, this is parsley, very good. It's an herb used in cooking and culinary. Over here, we have some dill, which is a ferny kind of leaf, almost like pine needles. Here we have some very small leeks that are just been planted. I just got those in yesterday. Over here I have some small little basil plants, which of course is another herb that is used in the kitchens everywhere. Now some leaves don't readily appear to be leaves. This is a spruce pine tree, and these little pine needles are each leaves. 
And of course, this tree is an evergreen. These needles stay on even throughout the winter time, and that's why they're called evergreens. Some trees with leaves are called deciduous. This means they lose their leaves in the fall and regrow them in the spring. This is a deciduous magnolia. It loses its leaves in the fall. And as you can see in the springtime, these are just now coming out, even has a little flower in it. These leaves are some of the biggest leaves that we have in North Carolina. Buds are at the tips of stems where they form flowers, leaves, and branches. Broccoli is made up of clusters of flower buds. It may not seem this way at first, but it's apparent if you've ever planted broccoli and allowed it to bloom. Now you can see how leafy this broccoli is. Right now it's mid-spring. I planted this broccoli in February, back when it was still cold. Now you can see all these leaves are picking up all the energy from the sun, and they're starting to produce the florets that we know and love. This florette will get probably about this big, and at that point we cut it for our broccoli. Now if I didn't cut that florette, it would eventually flower, and it would go through its reproduction process. Flowers and fruit. As the plant grows bigger, it starts to grow buds, which later sprout into flowers. A flower is the part of the plant used for reproduction. Reproduction, or to reproduce, means making more of yourself. Trees reproduce and make seedlings, and dogs reproduce and make puppies. Flowers turn into the seeds and fruit of a plant. Fruit covers the seeds. Fruit can be fleshy like an apple. Fruit can be soft like a strawberry. Or hard like a nut, like an acorn. To learn more, let's check in with Farmer Bill. Here I'm standing in front of a dogwood. Dogwood is one of my favorite trees. It's a common understory tree found throughout North Carolina. As you can see now in the springtime, it has these gorgeous white blooms. These blooms will fade and will turn into berries in the fall. These red berries are very visible and are greatly appreciated by all our wildlife. Here I am in a patch of May apples. This, of course, is a north-facing slope. This is a cool weather plant. This is one of our natives. And this is a fine example of a plant that flowers and then has a fruit. So later on, this May apple will have a, a flower that uh, blooms in May. And then after that, in the fall, these May apple flowers will turn into a lemon-shaped fruit. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us on our virtual field trip about the parts of a plant. We hope that you're able to get outside and see for yourself some of the things that we learned today. Now, let's check for understanding.